Hello and welcome to our training course on how to build a money-making blog using Amazon Affiliate Marketing. I'm Ava and I will be taking you step by step all the way from deciding what your blog should be about, to building your site and growing your audience. But let's take a step back and cover the basics first. What exactly is affiliate marketing? In a sentence, it's all about promoting and recommending someone else's products in exchange for a commission, typically whenever someone actually ends up buying the product after consuming your content. There's a good chance that you've already interacted with content online where the creators of said content use affiliate marketing as a way to monetize their work. If they link to a product in their video description, offer a unique discount code to use at checkout, or link to products on Amazon on their blog posts, there's a good chance that they're using affiliate marketing to receive a commission from anyone who makes a purchase. Amazon's affiliate marketing program is one of the largest out there and one that you've almost certainly been exposed to one way or another when browsing the web. Let's look at a real site that uses affiliate marketing to make money. This site is called Best Roof Box and as you can see it is a content site entirely focused on roof storage solutions for cars. To the untrained eye, it looks just like any other informational site you would come across to find detailed information on a specific niche. In this case, of course, roof boxes for cars. Also note the complete lack of banner advertising anywhere on the site. However, as you'll find in just about all of their posts, you'll see that there are Amazon links embedded to products that are referenced in them. For example, this article was discussing the various different ways you could store a cargo box when you're not using it with one option being to use a ceiling storage system. Lo and behold, look at what's been linked below. An Amazon affiliate link to the exact product on Amazon. As we'll discover shortly, this approach of linking readers to products actually being discussed in the post is not only far less of a nuisance than random banner ads you typically see, but incredibly useful to the reader, who in all likelihood is actually looking to purchase one. Seriously, not many people are going to read about something as boring as this unless they're trying to solve a real problem in their lives. Now you should have a pretty good idea of what exactly affiliate marketing is. In the next video, we're going to touch on why this may or may not be the right pursuit for you. See you there. Now let's talk about why someone would want to pursue an opportunity like this. Well, one of the main benefits is that there is no effort required on your part to come up with a new product or service. As an affiliate marketer, your role is to match the needs of your audience with existing products that address them. Instead of coming up with your own product, you need to put in the effort to make the buying decision for your audience easy by making detailed and engaging content about the existing product or products that you are recommending. We'll go into detail the types of content that works well later in the training material. You'd be surprised how often your audience would make purchasing decisions based on the advice of a trusted voice like you, but of course, with great power comes great responsibility. Trust is king in the world of affiliate marketing. Your audience places a lot of trust in you when they decide to purchase a product based on your recommendation, so there is absolutely zero room for being dishonest, opaque, or in any way sketchy or misleading. If you're a politician, this may not be the thing for you. Sorry. Now that we're clear on who this might be for, and who it isn't, let's talk about why Shopify will be our platform of choice when it comes to building our affiliate site later in the course. See you there. You'll see later on in the training that will get you to create a brand new Shopify store to host your blog. Why Shopify, of all the platforms out there, to host a blog? Well, the truth is that of course you could use just about any website slash blog slash e-commerce platform to build an affiliate marketing site. In my humble opinion though, what makes Shopify a particularly great one to use is the thousands of apps available that can get your site to have the exact functionality that you need, such as our very own Shopify app. Yep, there's the shameless plug, which sets up your website specifically so that it can be used for Amazon affiliate marketing and allows you to easily add and manage affiliate products. On top of this, Shopify is of course a full-blown e-commerce platform, which will actually come in handy if later on you decide to make and sell your very own products in place of your most successful affiliate products, which we'll also touch on later in this training material. Also, as Shopify is a fully managed service, you don't need to think at all about how to host or maintain your site. They handle it all for you so you can focus solely on building your affiliate marketing empire. Next, let's talk about the golden rules of building a successful Amazon affiliate marketing blog. 
see you there. I've seen my fair share of Amazon affiliate marketing sites, and from that I have a good idea of what works and what doesn't. From my own experiences, I've come up with the following rules that need to be front of mind as you build your affiliate marketing empire. Focus on the problems slash needs of your audience first and foremost. Do not start by looking at the different commission rates that Amazon pays depending on the product category. Your role as an affiliate marketer is to genuinely help your audience address the pain points in their life, which is not at all alleviated by getting a fatter commission for pushing a product that's completely irrelevant to the needs of your audience. Ideally, you should only ever promote products you have actually used. Now of course this might not always be possible, but you at least need to have comprehensive knowledge of any product you promote so you can confidently recommend it to your audience and highlight any quirks about it that you wouldn't find in its promotional material. Even though it's not your product, you should actually treat it as if it were your own. Again, from the perspective of your audience you are an expert on the product you're promoting. So you not only need to be very familiar with it, but you need to use that knowledge to help your audience understand how they stand to benefit from purchasing it. I'll repeat it again. Trust is king in the world of affiliate marketing. The internet can smell lies and deceit from a mile away. Your reputation is on the line if you are not honest or transparent to your audience in any way. It may also be a legal requirement in your country to disclose that you'll be earning a commission from the links or checkout codes in your content, which you'll see examples of later on in the training material. You should consider the commissions you earn as a measure of how helpful you are being. All of the content you produce should always come from a place of serving your audience, which they will keep coming back for again and again. Coming from a place of trying to make a quick buck will never work. Look for opportunities to differentiate your content from everyone else. For example, if there are lots of blog posts about your product but not that many good video reviews of it, or those video reviews may be missing vital points about the product, it'll absolutely be worth doing a video review. And that's it for the basics of Amazon affiliate marketing. In the next section, we're going to take you through how to choose the right products to promote on your blog, starting with how many products you should be promoting. See you there. So how many products should I be promoting? Well, I'm gonna have to stop you there. Because you need to be fairly knowledgeable about the products you're recommending, it's actually best to start with one product. By going one product at a time, you will be able to devote the appropriate amount of time and energy getting to know it pretty well, which is vital to your success as an affiliate marketer. Then as you go along, you can then turn your attention to the next product, the one after that, and so on. Now that's not an excuse to focus on a product for a day, then move on to another product the next day. You need to be spending weeks understanding not only the product itself, but also how it's a good fit for your audience, coming up with a plan on how to communicate to your audience that this is something that they'll genuinely benefit from, and so much more that we'll cover later in the course. In the next video, let's talk about the types of products that you should be promoting. See you there. So what kind of products should I be promoting? Well, the simple answer is anything on Amazon. But the big caveat to that is that it must be something that genuinely fills a need of your audience. There's no point trying to sell a dog brush to a goldfish owner. Now probably the next thing you're thinking is, anything, but there are so many categories on Amazon, how could I possibly narrow it down to a single category, let alone a single product? And to that I'd say that a good place to start is to try and look at the product categories that you already have knowledge or expertise about. The knowledge for that niche could come from one of your hobbies, from your day job, or even the things that fascinate you so much that you're up at 3 a.m. watching YouTube videos about them. It can even come from incidental experiences that are not related to your profession or hobbies, for example, there may have been a time at work where you helped coordinate an office move or you may have installed security cameras for your home. Whatever it is, so long as you can get products on Amazon related to that category, you're off to a good start. The next thing is to step back and think about a goal that is related to your niche and how a product from Amazon might help someone achieve it. For example, your audience might be people that are running successful businesses and they may have just gotten successful enough that they're starting to hire staff and lease out office space, this is the why of your audience. In other words, why does your audience need to buy the product you're promoting? Now that they have office space, they need to fit out their new office with desks, office chairs, monitors, the list goes on, this is the what of your audience. 
In other words, what will help them address their why? Now this is the point where you come in, because you can recommend this specific desk, or that specific office chair that is available on Amazon, because you've actually used them of course, and you have a few things to say about them. Next, we're going to cover my golden rules that you should follow when picking products to promote on your blog. See you there! This list is a byproduct of me seeing the best and worst of Amazon affiliate marketing, so treat this as the five commandments of picking the right products. Pick products that support your audience's why. When you start with the why of your audience, it becomes much easier to explain to them why they should buy the product you're promoting, because in that moment they're looking for a product that will help them address it. There must be a clear transformation between before using the product and after using it. Let's be honest, it's pretty easy to achieve this in the context of the example in the previous section. No self-respecting business is going to get staff to work on the floor. Instead, your focus should be on how your product does things better than your competitors. The clearer and more compelling those benefits are, the better. The best products are ones that can be clearly demonstrated, which is just about every physical product on Amazon. Can you make videos, take pictures or write blog posts demonstrating to your audience why they should buy them? If so, then you're on to a winner. Pick products that have the potential to be indispensable to your audience, where they simply couldn't live without them. Finding a product that becomes part of their everyday habits is absolute gold. Think about the products you've purchased that have incorporated themselves into your daily habits, and how much of a lifesaver they are. They will thank you and handsomely reward you, via Amazon affiliate commissions, for helping them save time, stress, and money. With these rules in mind, in the next video, we're going to start brainstorming product ideas that will work for you. See you there! Welcome to our first exercise. In this exercise, we will first figure out which niche aligns with your interests, hobbies, and passions. We need to start here because before we start thinking of which products to promote, we should start by spending some time reflecting on niches where you already have a deep level of knowledge. For example, if you do woodworking as a hobby and you have been doing it long enough that you could recommend which plane is the best to use, you might consider picking woodworking as your niche. If you're a gadget nerd and you're always across the latest in tech, you might consider picking tech gadgets as your niche. It's best just to pick one niche to focus on rather than multiple so you can invest all your time getting to know it really well if you need to, and be able to make solid purchasing recommendations that your audience will find genuinely helpful. Now, let's bring all this together to build up a list of up to five niches that you might be interested in choosing. Check out the link in the description to get a template you can use to help you complete the exercise. When you've got this list together, rank them in order of how much you know about each one. Now consider your number one. It's the one you know most about which is perfect, but consider whether it's one you're interested enough in that you'd be willing to deepen your understanding about it. If you are willing, then congratulations, you found your niche. If not, consider your number two. Rinse and repeat until you land on a niche that you'd be willing to learn more about. Now that we've decided on a niche, let's brainstorm some actual product ideas in the next video. See you there. Let's get straight into our second exercise. Once again, check out the link in the description for templates to help you complete it. Now that you're clear on your niche, let's start brainstorming Amazon products related to your niche that might be worth promoting. For the rest of the exercises in this section, we'll use the example audience of new business owners that have just secured their first dedicated office space. For our first brainstorming approach, start by listing out your audience's what's or things that people in your niche might want to accomplish. Try and come up with as many as you can. Then next to each of them, Add the words, so that, and complete the sentence. In other words, by achieving the what, what is the why that is being satisfied? This prompt helps you to link people's needs to the reasons why they need to do them. This will be particularly helpful when making content about your affiliate products, so you can more effectively frame how the product addresses your audience's why in the content you produce. Now from the table you've just built, research products that can help with addressing your audience's what's, which will subsequently address their whys, and start putting together a list of products. Your list can look as simple as this. If you're finding it difficult coming up with what's for your audience, consider the following prompts. If your audience could wave a magic wand and make a pain point disappear, what would it be? What products could help address that pain point? List them out and research products that could fix them. 
Instead of thinking about what your audience is running towards, which is all we've focused on so far, what are they running away from? List them out and research products that could help with that. And with that, we should now be building up a nice list of product ideas. We're going to continue to grow out this list with our next exercise. See you there. In our third exercise, we're going to take a slightly different brainstorming approach to help you grow the list of products that you've come up with in the previous exercise. This time, let's focus on a high-level goal of your audience and consider what would be their next step to help achieve it. You could map this all the way to the point that they achieve that goal, but start small and work your way up. Again, we're using the example niche of small business owners that are just starting out on their entrepreneurial journey. And let's say that a high-level goal they have in mind is to build and run a successful business making $5 million in revenue per year. This is where deep knowledge of your niche is vital. In order to come up with product ideas that will work you need to have enough understanding of your niche to come up with potential high-level goals that your audience can relate to. Now that we have a goal in mind, let's then break down all the steps our budding small business owners might need to take to accomplish it. As always, check out the link in the description for a template you can use. A first step they might have could be as simple as finding out what kind of businesses have a fair chance of being able to make $5 million per year. Once that's clear to them, the next step would be to consider which of those align best with the skills they already possess. Then the next step could be to think about how much they can commit to the business. Keep brainstorming these steps as far as you can, ideally until the goal is achieved. You'll find as you do this that some of these steps are difficult to find Amazon products for. It's okay if you run into the same problem when you do this exercise, because as you can see in step 7, we eventually found a step that could be addressed by products available on Amazon. Regardless, mapping out your audience's goals like this will also help you get a better understanding of what's going through their minds. You can use this improved understanding to write more relevant content that they'll be more likely to engage with. Now that we've broken down all the steps that need to be taken to complete the goal, consider the steps that can be achieved with products you might find on Amazon and start adding any that you find to your list that you started in the previous exercise. By now you should have a pretty lengthy list of products that could genuinely help your audience. It's worth noting that these exercises are not just limited to helping you find relevant Amazon products, they are also useful to help you identify needs that are not addressed well by existing products or potentially needs where there are no products at all. If you do find any needs like this, you might consider making your own product that better addresses the need you found. Needless to say that this is its own can of worms, so check out the link in the description for further reading on how to build your own products from scratch great work so far. In the next section we're going to take the list you've built and start narrowing it down to the point that you have a hero product that you can start producing content for. See you there. By now you have a solid spreadsheet of products that are relevant to your audience. At this point it's tempting to start making content for all of them, but as I said before, that's a big mistake because you'll end up having a lot of mediocre content for a lot of products, rather than amazing content for one product. Quality over quantity is key to building your audience, and small amounts of amazing content will trump large amounts of average content any day. Instead, it's time to pick a hero product. The first product you choose that you will make content for. Later you can check out our supplementary resources page in the video description for more detail about how to write amazing content, but for now we need to narrow down your list to just one product. Be sure to keep the rest of your list around though. Once you're ready to move on to another product to produce content for, you can use it to pick another product. With the list you now have, let's now step through narrowing it down to your one hero product. For each product in your list, note whether you've used it personally, whether you've heard about it, or whether you've never heard about it before. Now, look at the products you've used before and for each one note down whether it helps your audience achieve their why. There's a very clear transformation between before using it and after using it. And does it help them with their next step towards their goal? For the products where you've answered yes for all three of those above prompts, plus you've used them before, they are great candidates for your hero product. If you have more than one, pick one using any means you can think of, even a coin flip. If you haven't used any of the products that fit these prompts, I highly recommend that you go and use them. 
I will note however that you may not necessarily need to purchase them as there's every chance that the brand will send out review units for free if you were to contact them and explain that you were writing a review about them. Check out the email script you can use as a template in the supplementary resources linked in the video description. Now here's a top tip, feel free to use that spreadsheet muscle you might have to make this list pretty. As mentioned previously, you will be coming back to it again and again to pick your next product. So make like easier for yourself by setting it up so that it easily surfaces the products that meet our criteria. For example, you can use conditional formatting to mark yes responses as green and no responses as red, making it easier to pick out the products that are ideal candidates. Check out the Excel tutorial we have linked in the description if it's been a while since that muscle last got a workout. Okay, so now we've finally got a hero product. The next few videos will be the fun bit, where we go through the process of actually setting up your site and your Amazon Associates account. See you there! Alright. Let's create your affiliate site using Shopify. To reiterate, yes, Shopify is an e-commerce platform, but it's also a great option for building an affiliate marketing site. For more detail on why, check out our explanation in one of our previous videos in this series, linked in the description. So, let's get on with it shall we? First, head over to Shopify.com and sign up for the free trial with your email address. Thankfully, no credit card is required until you are ready to launch your site. We recommend manually setting your store name, so set it to the name that you have in mind for your site. Follow the prompts, and eventually you'll find yourself at the Shopify dashboard of your new store. Now the first thing we'll do is make sure that your blog posts appear on your store's homepage, which unfortunately will not happen by default. It's easy enough to set up the From the Shopify dashboard home, go to Online Store, then Themes, click Customize. You'll then enter the theme editor, where you can easily customize not only your home page, but all pages in your store. In the left-hand column of the theme editor, click Add Section. Search for Blog Post and click it. You should now see a blog post section pop up on your home page. You can customize it using the options that appear on the right-hand side. Also have a go at customizing the rest of your home page by adding, removing, and reorganizing sections as you wish. The next thing we want to do is set our Amazon Affiliate Disclosure. We'll go into detail about the do's and don'ts of the Amazon Affiliate Program in another video, but briefly, we need to do this because as a member of the program, you must clearly disclose that the links your audience clicks on will earn you a commission if they make a purchase. To set up your disclosure from the Shopify dashboard, click Online Store. Then click Themes, then Edit Languages. As you can see, there are a lot of fields that can be tweaked. Type Powered in the search bar, and you should see the Powered by Shopify field come up. In this field, simply paste your disclosure and save your changes. If you now go to the footer of your site, you will see that your changes have been applied. If you need any help while getting your site set up, or help with anything else Shopify related, Shopify has excellent and comprehensive support documentation, which we'll have a link to in the video description. Fantastic, your Shopify store is set up and ready to go. In the next video, let's create your first blog post. See you there. Now that our store is set up, let's post our first blog post. If you're not entirely sure what to actually write, you can check out our supplementary resources linked in the video description for guides and training on how to write content that is engaging and search engine friendly. As learning an art form like this is its own can of worms. Turning back to how to post your blog posts, this is probably where you'll spend most of your time in your Shopify store. As far as sharing your content with the world goes, it's just as simple as this. From the Shopify dashboard home, go to online store, then blog posts. Then click Create Blog Post. The editor has all the creature comforts you would expect to see in any good text editor. You can save your progress and come back to it later by saving with the visibility of the post set to hidden, you can add feature images, and you can tweak how your post is shown in search engines. Once you're ready to publish your new post, make sure to set the visibility to visible and save. Your new post will now be visible on your homepage, so long as you added the blog section to it like we showed you in a previous video. We'll have a link to it in the video description. 
And there you have it. Your content is now available for everyone to see. Now that we have our site up and running, and we now know how to post content to it, you will need to go ahead and post at least 10 blog posts to your site before you create your Amazon Associates account. Amazon requires that you have a fully functioning site with content on it. You will need to provide details of it during the sign-up process, and they will definitely check to make sure that it's a real site during the application process. This is also a good time to purchase a domain name for your site, so you can get rid of the pesky Shopify branding in the current domain name of it. Your site is also going to be far more likely to get accepted by the Amazon Associates program if you have your own domain, and it's going to save you the hassle of telling Amazon later that your domain name has changed. You can purchase a domain following the guide in the video description. Once you're done, it's finally time to create your Amazon Associates account. See you there! Just a reminder, before you go ahead and create your Amazon Associates account, Amazon requires that you have a fully functioning site with content on it. You will need to provide details of your site during the sign-up process. Make sure you have at least 10 blog posts on your site before going ahead and creating your account, otherwise your application may be rejected. It's time to create your first Amazon Associates account. Now, you may be thinking, first Amazon Associates account, how many of them am I going to need? Well, the thing with Amazon Associates accounts is that they're regionalized, meaning that if you sign up for an Australian Amazon Associates account, you'll only be able to generate links and receive commissions from products available on the Australian Amazon storefront. If you want to promote products available on the US Amazon storefront, then you'll need to sign up for a US Amazon Affiliates account. The process for signing up to all of them is just about the same. A full list of all regions that the Amazon Associates program is available in, along with direct links to their home pages, are linked in the video description. If you're not sure which region to start with, a good place to start is the region that most of your traffic will come from. This is determined by where you plan to focus your promotional activities geographically, whether that be via SEO or other marketing strategies. Shameless plug incoming. Our Shopify app has a feature where it will dynamically choose the right affiliate link to show to your user based on their location, so you will always send them to the right Amazon storefront. Check out the link in the video description for more information. Now, let's sign up for the program, you will need an Amazon account in order to sign up as an Amazon affiliate. You will be asked to sign in or create a new account when you click on the sign up button on the home page of the region of your choice. While there's nothing stopping you from using the account you're likely already using to buy stuff on Amazon, it's always a good idea to create a new one that you exclusively use for your new affiliate empire. Indicate who the main contact for the account is. As you're likely the only person working on your empire, it can just simply be you. List the websites and mobile apps you plan to post your affiliate links to. In our case, unless you're planning to post affiliate links on sites or mobile apps other than the site we just created, you can just simply list the URL of the site we just created. Another reminder, it's strongly recommended that you buy your own domain now so you can remove the Shopify branding from the domain name that comes with your site by default answer the questions about traffic and content. This is why we suggest you have at least 10 blog posts on your site, as if your site doesn't have much content on it, or even worse. Content from other sites, you're more likely to have your application rejected. Read and agree to the contract terms, then click finish. Now we play the waiting game. It may take Amazon between one to three days to review your application. You will receive an email once it has been reviewed. Hopefully, at this point your account will be approved, and you'll be ready to start adding affiliate links to the content you've just created. But before we get stuck into that, we need to cover some important ground rules about the Amazon Associates program in the next video. See you there! I have another list of golden rules for you. But make sure to pay special attention to these ones, because not following them could risk your very ability to make money from your blog. You must disclose that you will receive a commission if someone buys something through your affiliate link. This is something we already addressed when we created your site, where we put a disclosure in the footer. This is the bare minimum you can do to not get banned, but remember, trust is king in the world of affiliate marketing. It actually benefits you to disclose to your audience next to every affiliate link that it is indeed an affiliate link, so consider adding a short disclosure next to every affiliate link on your site. It can just be as simple as adding the words affiliate link, 
but the more obvious you make it to your audience the better. If you mention the price of a product on your site, it must be updated regularly. As we may already know, the price of many products on Amazon changes regularly, so to make sure your audience is not misled about the price of an affiliate product, you must have a way to make sure that it's automatically updated when it changes on Amazon. If you can't, then don't mention the price at all in your content. Now here's yet another shameless plug, you actually don't have to worry about the prices of products imported onto your site via our own Shopify app, as it will automatically update the prices of your affiliate products. We'll take you through how to install and use it in the next video. Do not use a URL shortener, or in any way cloak your affiliate link. You cannot in any way disguise your affiliate link as anything other than an affiliate link from Amazon. If you are worried about how long your URL is for any reason, the Amazon Associates dashboard has its own URL shortener you can use. Do not use affiliate links in emails, ebooks, or free downloads. You must only publish your affiliate links to the sites that you told Amazon you would publish them on. Emails, ebooks, or free downloads are not your site that you've just created. Some don't add them directly. One important thing to note though is that you are instead allowed to link to your site in emails, ebooks, or free downloads, which of course have affiliate links on them, so you can still earn commissions from your audience if they click through to your site. Do not purchase anything via your own affiliate link. This may go without saying, but Amazon gets pretty cross if you're making your own Amazon purchases using your own affiliate link. The same goes for if you directly share your affiliate link with friends and family. Do not create multiple Amazon Associates accounts per region. There's really no reason to have more than one account per region, so it's just simply not worth the hassle. To clarify, you are allowed to have Amazon Associates accounts in multiple regions, but to play it safe make sure you sign up for them using the same Amazon account you used to sign up for your first Amazon Associates account. Don't pretend to be Amazon. This one may also go without saying, but don't in any way pretend to be Amazon. They will really not like that. I can't emphasize how important it is to follow these rules. No one wants to risk the income coming from your blog, so please follow them and you'll be able to enjoy the commissions on your site for years to come. Now the next video is yet another shameless plug. We're going to show you how to install our own Shopify app to your store to make managing the Amazon affiliate products on your site a breeze. See you there. You thought our previous plugs were shameless. Well, it's about to get even worse as we're now going to show you how to install our very own Shopify app on your site and show you how it all works. First, go to our listing on the Shopify app store and click add app. There's a link to it in the video description. If you're not signed into your site, you will be prompted to sign in. You will be prompted to review the app install. Click install app to proceed with the installation. Now, a brief word on privacy. We only request permissions to your site that are absolutely necessary for the app to function as you would expect. This includes the permission to read, write, edit, and delete products. Whenever you do so via the Agora app, your changes are immediately reflected in your Shopify store. Read and edit the themes installed on your store. This allows us to modify your installed themes so we can replace the default Buy Now button with our custom Buy from Amazon button that sends the user to your Amazon product via your affiliate link instead. And just like that, the app is installed. You will be redirected to the app where you can start adding products. Let's add our first product. Click the Create button to add your Hero product to your site. Grab the link to your Hero product from the address bar and paste it in the Amazon URL box. Click search. The app will then go and retrieve the product listing from Amazon. This can sometimes take up to a minute. Edit the product's details as you see fit, hopefully based on what you've learned from the supplementary resources on how to write great product listings that Google will reward you for. Link is in the description. Once you're happy with your product listing, scroll to the bottom and click save. Your product will be saved to your site, which can take up to a minute. Once it's done, you will see your product on your site. Now, let's make sure that you'll be collecting your affiliate commissions by setting your associate ID under settings. You can find your associate ID in the top right hand corner of the Amazon Associates dashboard. Here's a tip. If you have Amazon Associates accounts in multiple regions, you can configure the associate ID for each account in the localized Amazon Associates ID section of settings.
The app will automatically select which affiliate ID to use based on the location of your audience member. We'll go into more detail about how this works in the next video. See you there! On top of making sure that the right associate ID is used based on the location of your audience member, as we mentioned in the previous video, our app also lets you configure equivalent products from the local Amazon storefront of your audience member. For example, if by default you're adding a product from the US Amazon storefront, you can find an equivalent product in the Australian Amazon storefront, add it to your product in the app as a localized Amazon URL, and your Australian audience will be directed to the product in the Australian Amazon storefront instead of the US one. This is important because your audience will be more likely to purchase from their local Amazon storefront rather than a foreign one, and in many cases, they may only ever be able to purchase from their local storefront. So by finding and adding equivalent products in all the regions you have Amazon Associates accounts for, you maximize your potential to receive commissions from purchases via your affiliate link. Another feature you will enjoy is Auto Product Update. When enabled, the app will automatically update the listed price of your product on a regular basis and whether it's still in stock or not. This addresses Amazon's requirement of ensuring that any prices listed on your site are up to date so you don't have to. Great! So you have blog posts on your site and affiliate products in your store. In the next video, let's showcase how they work together to help you earn commissions from Amazon. See you there! Now at this point you may be wondering, why are we linking to Shopify products generated by the app rather than directly to Amazon affiliate links? Well the main reason, as we discussed in the last section, is that the best affiliate link to send your audience member to varies greatly depending on where they are in the world. And in order to maximize your earning potential, the app will figure out which affiliate link is most relevant to them based on their location. To link to a product in your store, simply select the text that you want to turn into a link then click Insert Link. Now find the product in your online store, copy the link in the address bar, and paste it in the link to box. Once you're happy, click Insert Link, and your job year is done. I'll also note that it's typically best to set links so that they open in new windows so that your audience member can easily get back to your blog post. And now you have a killer affiliate site that's ready to take on the world. It's been a lot of work to get to this point, so if you've managed to get here, you have every reason to be proud of what you've achieved so far. In the final section of our training, we'll be taking you through all the different approaches you will take to promote your product, including both passive and active promotional strategies. See you there after popping a bottle of champagne of course. All right, let's now start to build up an audience for your site. There are two main strategies that we'll take you through, passive promotional strategies and active promotional strategies. Passive promotional strategies are where the user ends up deciding to take action of their own accord, such as exploring your website or signing up for your email marketing list, whereas active promotional strategies are those initiated by you, the store owner, to try and attract visitors to your site. Let's first look at the passive promotional strategies you can implement on your site. One of the best performing strategies you will ever implement will be adding a resources page to your site. This page lists out absolutely everything that will be helpful to your audience, not all of these links have to be affiliate links to Amazon products. Remember, your job is to help people find what they need to get what they want to do done. So this must be a comprehensive list that includes anything that would be helpful to your audience. If some of these resources slash products happen to have affiliate programs, then great, but don't get too caught up over the ones that don't because what's critical is that your audience finds value in them. Follow these golden rules for a resources page that your audience will love. This list is going to get big, so be sure to break it down into categories and subcategories. Also consider anything else that might make navigating this page better, because it's going to get really overwhelming really fast, such as a table of contents. Don't give people too many alternatives of the same thing. For example, if you've used a number of accounting software platforms over the years and you recommend most of them, limit the options you highlight to one to two. Anything more than that can overwhelm your audience. For each resource, it's helpful to add a short description about it, mentioning what it is and why it's useful. Keep this to no more than a couple of sentences. For a great example of a resources page, check out our own supplementary resources page linked in the video description. See, we practice what we preach. Another page that will perform well and provide a lot of value to your audience is your getting started page. 
If someone was brand new to your niche, what do they need to know? This is where all that information would go. If you've got a lot of previous content that's relevant, this is a great place to link to it. If you're just starting out and don't have a very big back catalog, this page is a great prompt for new content that you could link to on this page. As well as highlighting everything your niche is about and what you offer, it's also a good opportunity to highlight what you don't offer. You can also dispel myths about your niche and set clear boundaries on what's not covered or why it might not be a good idea to be in this niche. Check out the link in the description for a good example of a getting started page. Now, let's talk about email. You may have heard it many times before, but one of the most valuable marketing activities you'll undertake is building an email list of your audience. In any online business, being able to directly communicate with your audience and bypass intermediaries like social media platforms, like Facebook and Twitter, and marketplaces like Amazon and eBay is gold and will never not be relevant. As we've mentioned a few times already though, you need to come from a place of service and helpfulness. You need to earn that email address. So one good place to ask for email addresses is at the end of your content, and don't forget to add it to the bottom of your getting started and resources pages. Shopify has a great tutorial on how to collect email addresses on your site, so we'll have it linked in the video description. It's also worth considering offering a small bonus, something of value in exchange for providing their email address, something like a PDF on some specific knowledge of your niche, or a PDF guide on how to make the most of your hero product, or even an Amazon coupon code, or a discount on paid content you may produce. Anything that's valuable to your audience, and that doesn't cost too much for you to produce or acquire, will fit the bill. So what emails should you send to your audience once they provide their email address? Here's an effective email funnel that will work. Feel free to evolve your email funnel, over time you will gain a better understanding of what works and what doesn't. The critical question to keep in mind when trying new things is, does my audience get value from it? In terms of which email marketing platform to use, check out our supplementary resources. You can build out this funnel with just about any email platform though, so if you're up for experimenting be our guest. Email 1. Delivered upon sign up, out of the content you have. Can any of it help your audience with a quick win? Link it and your getting started page in your first email by integrating it into some killer copy. Email 2. Delivered 7 days after signing up. Tell a compelling story about your experiences starting out in your niche. Empathize with what they may be feeling at this point in their journey and prompt them to reply back asking what they need help with. This helps with making sure your audience doesn't feel bombarded by you, increasing the chances that they stay subscribed to you. Email 3. Delivered 14 days after signing up. Highlight your resources page. As mentioned before this will be one of your most visited pages because of how much value it provides, so showcase it in your email. You could even ask if they know of any resources that aren't listed. And those are the passive promotional strategies that will keep your audience engaged with your site. In the next video, we'll talk about the active promotional strategies that will help bring people to your site in the first place. See you there! Now, active promotional strategies sounds all fancy, but what we really mean by that is, what content should I be making? And how can I attract my audience to it? To help with brainstorming actual pieces of content, tools like Answer the Public are great. It gives you an indication on the questions people are asking based on the keywords you provide. This is gold because you can then create content answering the most popular questions which will help give you better visibility on search engines. We'll have it linked in the video description. In addition to using Answer the Public for content ideas, also consider these content ideas which work well regardless of your niche. Top Tools Roundup Posts that showcase the products needed to achieve a very specific thing or answer a very specific question. It can also be a comparison between competing products that achieve said thing or answer said question. We'll have a link to our favorite examples in the video description. Demos, by far one of the best ways to convince people to buy. Demos allow your audience to see the product in action, warts and all. Well, hopefully not too many warts. Now I know what you're thinking, I don't want my face on camera. Well, you don't have to. Unboxing videos, for example, are one way to show the product off without having to show your face. And in most cases, you'll also be able to demo the product as well. Be creative and experiment with other ways you can make this kind of content comfortably. 
The step-by-step -step process, to be clear, this is not a demo of the product itself. Instead, this is about achieving a very specific thing with the help of the product step-by-step. -step. What's particularly effective in this type of content is not only highlighting the paid way of achieving your task by way of purchasing your hero product, but showing the free or manual or low-cost ways of achieving something first, which in most cases will end up being more work than just buying your hero product. When your audience realizes how much effort your hero product can save, there's every chance that they'll end up choosing to purchase your hero product. The interview. Believe it or not, there is good mileage in interviewing the founder slash CEO of your hero product. It doesn't necessarily need to be a video interview. It could also be a written interview or podcast. If you manage to pull this off, do not approach it as a promotion. Instead, talk about the story behind the product and why it exists. If you can't get the founder, try and get someone from the public relations team or even existing users of the product who are success stories thanks to the product. Again, we'll have some great examples linked in the video description. The before and after. Don't overthink it, it's probably what you're already thinking. For the problem you are trying to solve, what's it like before using the product and what's it like after? If you found a success story for your interview, you can leverage it to create some compelling and engaging content. Again, it doesn't necessarily have to be a video interview, it can be a blog post if producing a video interview is beyond your capabilities. The same goes for all these content ideas by the way, feel free to use them to create any type of content that might work for you. So that's all well and good in terms of the type of content to produce, but how do we get people to actually discover it? There are really only two broad paths to go on. Search engine optimization and social media. Paid advertising in certain circumstances may work as well, particularly if you're using it to promote a product you've made from scratch, but the reality is that no matter how much money you invest in paid advertising, it will hardly ever net you more than what you invested when promoting affiliate products. Search engine optimization and social media marketing instead allow you to find and build your audience organically, which is why it's so important that the content you produce is not only good, but amazing. So amazing that people share it with others, leaving you with a self-growing group of raving fans. Now, both search engine optimization and social media marketing are large and complex topics in and of themselves, so we have links to some great resources to help building up your skills in both areas in the link in the video description. Congratulations! You've reached the end of our training on how to build an Amazon affiliates store end-to-end. -end. This is of course just the beginning of your journey, and while you now have enough knowledge to hit the ground running, you will need to delve deeper into specific topics that we discussed, especially SEO and social media marketing. Be sure to check out our supplementary resources page to find learning materials that go deeper into specific concepts and skills that we mentioned in this training. We wish you all the best on your journey to building the lifestyle you always wanted. It will be a tough slog, but it will be absolutely worth every ounce of effort that you put into it. Oh, and remember, trust is king in the world of affiliate marketing.